Susie Mae Warren with a little writer Q&A from My Book Therapy. We're going to do this every week, answering your questions that you've asked us about how to write a novel. So tune in. It's going to be awesome. This week we're starting with a question from a woman named Stephanie who asked, Is it better to write fiction based on real life or made up? Stephanie, that's an awesome question. A lot of people, when they first start writing, want to take something from their own life. In fact, many people want to start with what's called memoirs. I get a lot of clients that ask me, hey, I had this great story, this great life journey that happened to me, and I'd love to put it in a novel. And while at first glance, that looks like a great idea because you have all the information and all the knowledge and you can bring in all the character emotion for that, what ends up happening is two things. One is, it's hard to write because what happens is that you have to relive all those difficult memories. And often a memoir is about a difficult time in your life that you had to go through. So guess what? You have to go through it again. And if people aren't ready for that emotional connection and experience again, it can be overwhelming. So I kind of ask people, hey, are you ready for that? Are you ready to dive into that emotional experience again? If not, you might want to try something else. And if so, go ahead and try it. But you also have to remember that number two, memoirs are actually structured like novels. A character goes on a journey and they learn something in the end, they have an epiphany and they move on. And so even though it sounds like a uh, true life telling or something that you could just narrate like a journal, really you have to understand novel writing techniques in order to deliver a great memoir. Now, memoirs is a whole different topic, so we'll talk about that some other time. But I want to touch back on that question that she had, which was about should she use real-life experiences or made-up experiences? And the answer is, well, Stephanie, you should use both. The fact is that a great novel is written both from a seed or an idea from something that happened, something real, and then it's coupled with a big what-if question. And that's where your imagination takes over. And so you see something in the news or someone it says something or you overhear something in conversation and then you ask, hmm, what if? This happened to me not long ago. I was on an airplane. It was about a year and a half ago. And I was on an airplane with a woman who was clearly agitated. She was upset about something. And I asked about it because she looked upset. And so I felt like I should be friendly. And she told me that she was on her way to, to put her daughter into the witness protection program. Now I thought, that is really intriguing. And when I asked her more about it, she said, yes, it was going to be forever. And not only that, but her daughter was only 21 years old. And so then I began to think, well, what if I was that woman? How would I feel? Or what if I was the girl? And what kind of story would I write from that? Those questions prompted me to write a story called You Don't Know Me, and it came out last fall. And it's about a woman who's been in the witness protection program for 20 years and hasn't told anyone, including her family. It's kind of a fun story, and I enjoyed it, but it came from a real-life situation, and I just employed my imagination to it and said, well, what if happened? Now, let me tell you something about fiction. With fiction, you can do things that mm, you can't necessarily do in real life. You can change situations, you can change character reactions, you can have people choose bad at things. Well, of course, they do that in real life as well. But the point is, is that if when you're writing a memoir, you're sort of locked into what really happened. When you're writing fiction, you can do whatever you want. And so it's very freeing, and now you're free to explore all sorts of ideas, all sorts of story questions, and have your characters do things that might be a little bit unpredictable, maybe not even wise, but so that they'll learn a lesson in the end. Now, I don't know about you, but I think novels are a very strong uh, piece of literature. I obviously love them because I write them. Now, in case you're wondering, I asked myself this question a few years ago about my life as a missionary in Russia. I had a lot of experiences, and I thought, whew, they'd be great in a novel. Well, actually, I thought they'd be great in a memoir. But once I started thinking about it, I thought, eh, I don't want everybody to know exactly everything that happened there, and some of it wasn't that exciting. And so I thought, what if I put it in a novel instead? I could take maybe a different look at it and a different perspective and maybe raise some different questions that people hadn't thought about. So I ended up writing a three-book series. I call it the Josie series about a woman who goes to Russia and is a missionary and ends up getting married and staying there and living there. And I was able to put in all the experiences I had only with a little bit of a different flavor. Now, as a novelist, you'll always use things that are real to yourself and real situations, real characters, real emotions. But I find that when you fictionalize it, it gives you more freedom and actually more power to your story. So if you're thinking about writing a story and you've got a memoir inside of you, hmm, I want you to consider writing a novel. You just might find it's the most exciting thing you've ever done.
Thanks a lot for listening. Be sure and subscribe to our channel, My Book Therapy, for more great writer tips, and I'll see you next week.